Hey everybody, Tyre Metalhead Boy the Man here. Hopefully everyone's doing well and has had a good week. We're nearing Friday here. Just trying to have a video up a little bit earlier than the time that what this one is going up as, but life happens and I apologize for that. But uh, we're going to be doing a winter outlook here. And what I'm about to talk about here may particularly interest those in the Southeast. You need to be watching this one. Uh, so make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe button and here we go. We're getting into things So no secret already. We've known that we've been in an El Nino phase for a while here with the Enzo set up here Very strong El Nino phase starting to come in now too uh, In case you guys aren't super familiar with El Nino I did make a video recently that talks about that Link to that will be in the top right corner, by the way. But um, El Nino is interesting in a lot of ways. It has so much more to do than just this little area right here where we have those uh, ocean temperatures uh, on the rise here, well above average here. This definitely affects the weather uh, patterns across the world, actually. In particular, uh, the US is one point of interest. Also towards Europe is another area to talk about as well. But El Nino, what it actually will do in this type of setup, especially when you start to have a uh, more prevalent El Nino like this one, we'll uh, see uh, a little bit warmer air coming in from the north here. And we'll sometimes even see drier air over towards, let's say, maybe the Ohio Valley. Even Tennessee Valley could sometimes see drier air. But what also can make things complicated here is the uh, subtropical jet rolling in from the Pacific here. This in turn will create a setup to where we see more active weather towards the southern states and also cooler air towards the southern states as well. So why that? Why would you be concerned about that? Cooler and wetter weather or cooler, and more moisture could potentially. And I'm not saying that this is a guarantee if the timing is right could even be potential for maybe a couple of southern systems here of course looking this far out kind of hard to really say that that this will end up being the case but i've been seeing a little bit of a trend here and it kind of remind me of a couple of events in the uh, years past that have really piqued my interest here and those years were a little bit on the stronger side when it came to el nino uh, briefly touching on what a strong El Nino is. So El Ni in order to understand that, El Nino and La Nina, uh, this is all based off ocean temperatures over this region that we were just referring to earlier. When we're above average, th that's an El Nino phase. When we're below average, it's La Nina phase. But that's usually when we're above uh, either 0. 0.5 degrees above or uh, below 0. 0.5 degrees Celsius point below obviously El Ni uh, La Nina and then El Nino is above and then of course we also have the neutral phase which is right in between the two but as you can see right here we're pretty well into a El Nino phase here we've been there for a while now but we're really starting to ramp up now it's been ramping up since the uh, back half of last month now so we're starting to actually get into what's referred to as a strong El Nino phase the strong phase is usually whenever we see 1.5 degrees temperature increase or decrease. This goes along for either phase. Uh, but in this case, we're seeing a very strong El Nino starting to take shape here. And as a result, I think that this pattern that we see now could potentially be more enhanced. Uh, no, like I said, no guarantees here, but the El Nino phase is definitely not something to, uh, shrug off for anyone that's not quite as familiar with weather so with the uh, diagnostic here that was issued by the uh, climate prediction center this was uh towards mid last month we're under actually what's called a el nino advisory which has a uh, pretty high chance of there being an el nino um scenario playing out or el nino face and what garners my attention the most the uh, there's particular model data that favors a strong event with a uh, 75 to 85 percent chance pretty high confidence especially through november to january and we're already seeing that play out now so there's even a three out of ten chance that a historically strong event that could rival let's say the uh 
2015 to 2016 event, or maybe even 1997 to 98, to any of my weather nerds that may happen to be watching this, you know how big those years were. Those are not those are not terms that you should be scoffing at. Thankfully, it's only 30%, but still, that's something to definitely keep a close, close eye on. But we'll go ahead and take a look at some El Nino years. And while this wasn't necessarily after mentioned in the uh, outlook here, we'll go ahead and look. This is the 2010 outlook. And the reason why I, I uh, marked that as significant is uh, because in particular we were talking about winter, potential winter systems over towards the south here. This blue circle right here actually uh, is kind of a good indicator of what we had going on around 2009 2010 and 2010 in particular caught my interest a lot because we actually had our first white christmas in atlanta in i think over 110 years at the time that's the first time i'd ever had a white christmas because i'm an atlanta native and then also another thing to note is the uh, warmer air that's also been uh, posted up over towards the northeast and the northwest and oddly enough if I were to go ahead and take a look at the climate outlook here, look at what we find. There we go. Doesn't that seem familiar? <laughs> Doesn't that seem familiar? 2010. So there are some similarities to previous years, of course. I mean, given the fact that it's the same phase, that's not super surprising. But nonetheless here, some other years that I've uh, also have kept in mind here is the 2014 to 2016 El Nino event. This was taken in November 2015. Uh, look at if you actually were to look at this map in comparison to what we saw here, very similar actually. So if you remember if you remember the storm system through uh, 2014 to 2016, you definitely need to be watching as well. A lot of big events happened that year. I remember, uh, <clears throat> I remember uh, Snowmageddon over towards the northeast. There was a uh, big time winter event towards the southeast as well. So, just because you have an El Nino and you're likely to see warmer than average temperatures, let's say towards the northwest and northeast, does not mean you can't get a wintry system here. So let's make sure we're keeping an eye over here too. I haven't mentioned you as much in this video yet, but don't forget, don't forget where you are. But that being said here, like another year that uh, kind of stood out to me is the uh, 2018 El Nino year. Not quite as strong as uh, what we were seeing starting out, but towards the latter half, it started to really pick up a little bit. But nonetheless, it's still a uh, still another really good comparison. And it still was eventful. It was an eventful time as far as uh, winter was concerned. So. Like I said, mainly we need to be looking out for um, any sort of shifts here in regards to the uh, overall, in regards, to, in regards to the overall jet stream, in in uh, particular, I should say. <coughs> so, what we need to be watching mainly right now will be a uh, a bit more of a ridge probably developing out west over time. And then eventually I would anticipate maybe even a few more troughs beginning to come into play in regards to the heart of the country, maybe even the southeast. These are really just more off, uh, more or less just kind of uh, my thoughts on this more so than a forecast or outlook. It's a slight update and then just kind of my own thoughts on this. It's a little bit different from what I'm used to doing on here. So bear with me on that. But either way. This is just more so speculation than anything else, I think, on my end. <laughs> but that being said here, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Everybody that's watched, thank you. Appreciate you guys sticking around during the quiet time this year, which has been long overdue, if I'm being honest. But anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed. You know what to do. If you did, smash that like button, decimate that subscribe button obliterate that share button but uh it's been tired metal at weatherman i'll see you guys tomorrow evening with the weekend forecast